Today we will be showing you how you can build your own first aid kit. These items are easily available and very useful to have, especially when your hamster gets sick and you can't get to a vet in time. So the first item we have is a pee pad. This comes with a plastic backing so the pee doesn't leak through and is a very good alternative to paper towels. It's more absorbent and you can buy this anywhere. The next item in my first aid kit is the F10 spray. It's marketed as an odorless, non-toxic disinfectant spray that kills all types of pathogens, targets bacteria, viruses, fungus, and spores. There is no wiping off required. Hamsters can come in direct contact with it with no adverse effects. If your hamster is being treated for any fungal or bacterial infections, this would be great to use as a disinfectant to disinfect cages and toys. It costs between $15 to $18 and can be bought on online pet stores like The One Pet. Links will be in the description box. This is an ointment in the F10 range and it does pretty much the same thing as a spray but in ointment form. For open wounds, this ointment is very effective in killing and keeping bacteria out of the wound while providing a barrier that adheres to the wound site. It contains glycerin and lanolin to soothe irritated skin. For this, a little goes a long way so one tube can last a really long time. It costs between $16 to $20 and can also be bought on the one pet. So shout out to all pets in Aqualife Clinic who donated these F10 products to us. Fostering often sees lots of animals coming through our doors, from healthy to extremely sick ones, so we've been using them really often and it's really effective for us. The next item that I have is an electric blanket. This is useful to have on hand for hamsters whose body temperatures are dropping rapidly. I got this from Taobao for around $8. It has two heat settings and warms up pretty gently so it doesn't feel burning hot for the animals. If you are unable to rush them to an emergency vet, the first thing that you need to do is to keep them warm. You can place this under your cage or in the cage depending on how weak the animal is. This also works for orphan babies, keeping their body temperatures up is crucial to helping them stay alive. Temperatures in the warmer months can easily hit 35 degrees Celsius. If you notice your hamster showing signs of heat stroke, you can cool them down by placing an ice pack under their cages or wrapping it with a towel and placing it near your hamster. I got this for free at the hospital when I gave birth but you can find this in Daiso or even for free if you buy cold groceries online. This is a pre-made electrolyte solution. If your hamster is severely dehydrated or has diarrhea, you will need to administer rehydration immediately. If you have a store-bought solution like this, you would want a 50-50 mix of solution to water. For dwarfs, you should be aiming for at least 0.2 mils and Syrians 0.5 mils every hour until you're able to get to a vet. What I like to have with me is also a small dish. It's very useful for mixing, especially if syringe feeding is required. I have a couple of syringes that I have on hand in two sizes, 0.3 mils for dwarves and 1 mil for Syrians. This is very nice to have for feeding medications and any kind of liquid supplements. If you don't have this, you can buy this from the vet clinic or you can also get it at any pharmacy. This is a must-have item in my first aid kit, cotton pads and q-tips. They are useful for cleaning and applying topical medications to the smallest areas. They are widely available and you will most likely already have them at home. Latex gloves, so important especially when handling hamsters who have infectious diseases. Keep it clean, girl. This is the Critical Care Mix from Vet Arc. This is the ultimate product for emergency feeding of any species. Oxbow also has a critical care mix, theirs is hay based. I can't remember the price of this but I got this at the vet. Apelin B12 is an appetite stimulant for hamsters who have a decrease in appetite. I would typically feed 0.1 mil for dwarves and 0.3 for Syrians once a day to boost their appetite, especially if they're on medication. You are able to get this at all vet clinics or Watsons and Guardians. Banabac gel is a probiotic supplement for hamsters who are on antibiotics. So Banabac reintroduces beneficial digestive bacteria back in their systems, available at major pet stores and it costs around $20. Cuticle nippers have a very precise tip. They are finer and more precise than nail clippers. My hamsters are really calm, so this is something that I can do on my own. However, if your hamster struggles with nail trimming, it's best to let a vet do it instead. Accidents can happen really easily with squirmy hamsters and they might bite you. I bought this from a manicure supply store, but you can find it easily online. I keep an old towel in my kit to burrito my hamsters, especially when it comes to feeding medications and they don't like the taste. This helps to secure them. 
These are black tea bags which are available at all supermarkets. Great for excessive bleeding as the tannins in the tea promote blood clotting. To use, steep a tea bag in a cup of water for 2 to 3 minutes. Soak a cotton pad in the tea and apply to the wound. I like to keep a pair of pointed tweezers in my kit. If your hamster has an open wound and there are debris stuck around the wound, tweezers would allow you to remove it effectively. I got this from Taobao and you can usually find them for about a dollar. Saline is used to clean wounds or wipe any discharge or crust. It is sterile, antiseptic, versatile and cheap to have. It is widely available in all pharmacies for under a dollar. This is artificial tears. It's an eye lubricant for humans but can be used on hamsters as well. Here's what it looks like on the inside. This can be used to lubricate dry or irritated eyes and is available at all major pharmacies. I also like to keep a bottle of eye wash on hand. For sticky eyes and discharge, this is something that can be used if you do not have saline solution. This contains boric acid which is beneficial for irritated eyes and is available at most pharmacies. The next few items are useful for post-surgical care. What I have here is melolin gauze. It is a super absorbent wound dressing with a thin film of plastic on one side. The plastic end is usually applied to the wound and this allows any blood or fluids to be effectively absorbed into the cotton backing while preventing any fibers from sticking to the dried blood and wound. One piece is really big and will last you quite a while if you cut it into smaller pieces. I got this at the vet clinic but it should be available at all pharmacies. This is Tegaderm film. It's a little hard to explain what it really is but it is like a big waterproof band-aid. Only the sides are sticky so it seals the dressing in and the wound stays completely dry. I like to cut it down to smaller pieces to use as medical tape for bandages. An alternative would be micropore tape but I find it less sticky than the Tegaderm adhesive and sometimes my hamster can peel it off. This is a self-adhesive bandage. I love this because you can cut it down to size. It's stretchy so it compresses the wound and it's very useful for bleeding. It can also be used to protect bandaging. This is available at most clinics and pharmacies probably stock it too. I made this surgical suit out of an old sock for my previous hamster who had a tumor removed from his kidney. This takes about a minute to make and is relatively simple. You will need to cut out a v-neck and three straps on both sides. E-collars did not work on him and he managed to chew the stitches off three times. The third time I found him with his gut spilled out I had to rush him into an emergency room to get him put together again. It was absolutely horrifying and I almost lost him that day. So how I did it was I used a small piece of melonin on the surgical side, taped it around with a piece of micropore, secured it with more gauze which you may need to take with more micropore at this point and then I secured everything with a self-adhesive bandage before I put the suit on. After wearing the suit, I noticed that he tried to chew on the area but it worked. That's all the items I have in my first aid kit and again, these items are not meant to replace proper vet care and medications. The most important thing to have in your first aid kit is a list of vets. We have created a list of vets who are experienced in treating hamsters in Singapore. You can check this out on hamstersociety.sg. Thanks for watching!